Hey everyone, today I want to show you how I made this website for my friend Sarah, including the design process in Figma and also vectorizing some of her art to use on the website. I love to see other people's design process, so I thought it'd be fun to give you a little peek into my process. But first, if you're new here, hi, I'm Jen. I am a freelance web designer and artist. While you're still here, I'd love for you to help a fellow human out and give this video a like. It's free and easy and quick. Okay, let's get into it. So first thing I do is I go to Pinterest and I make a board for the website that I'm going to create. And then I just gather a bunch of pins that I think may fit the vibe of the website. So these are all very different. Initially, she had told me that she wanted something that was like kind of modern and minimal. But then she also wanted something that was a little more artsy, artistic, because she wanted to include um, some of her art on her website too. So I also included some of these more colorful, artsy websites. In this case, since I was working for a client I invited her to collaborate on the board and so she could see all of these pins and then she can come in and star the ones that she really liked I think that this is really key when you're working with a client because they may use language like I want something that's minimal or I want something that's like modern or retro and those those words can mean different things to different people you know so I think it's best to make sure you're on the same page by seeing like tangible examples So next I went into Illustrator to work on the branding and I took screenshots of the websites from Pinterest that she really resonated with and just put them in here for my reference and also included some images that she shared with me that she kind of wanted to match the vibe of for her website. I like to keep them here in Illustrator just as I'm working on branding. I'm not copying the, the designs, but it's just to kind of like get quick reference and quick ideas um, to try things out. So I just put everything in one spot right here so it's all easy for me to see. And then all of this stuff is actually her art. So I used the image trace tool in Illustrator to vectorize these images that she had given me and remove the background so that I could use them potentially in the website. So next is kind of my favorite part, which is trying out a bunch of different fonts for her branding. Um, and then I was also kind of trying to make a logo like this. This was going to be her logo So these are the ones that I ended up liking the most So then I created a few different color palettes and then started creating different branding concepts So just playing around with different fonts and graphical elements um, And then I would just kind of copy and paste the entire concept and change around the colors and change the fonts and try new things This is a really fun part of the process for me one of the tools I use to find different fonts is this website called wordmark.it. You uh, enter in a text and then it shows you all the different fonts that you have installed on your computer. So these are the different branding concepts that I came up with initially. I then exported these and shared them with the client on Google Drive. So she was able to go in and comment on the things that she liked and didn't like. And using her feedback, I iterated a few more times and then ended up settling on this one right here. So now that the branding is done, I'll go into this program called Figma to start planning out the design of the actual website. So I'll start by creating a frame for the homepage. I also like to have kind of a rough idea of the site layout, and then I'll just start building out the website. So starting with a rectangle for the background and then working on the header. As I'm working in Figma, my workspace is pretty messy. I like to dump all the images that I might use in here. And then I also dump a lot of text that I might use. So in this case, I actually have had the client fill out a form that I created with some questions that would help generate some copy that I could use on the website. I also took some of the text from her old website and dumped it in here too. As I'm designing, I kind of have an idea of what I want to include on the homepage and I'll just start throwing things down very roughly and then I'll just 
iterate a lot. So I'll duplicate an entire design and try one or two things differently. I might just duplicate a small section just to quickly try out a new idea I had, try things in different colors. I'll just keep iterating until I end up with a design that I kind of like, and then I'll move it over to a clean page in Figma and share it with the client. In this case, I iterated a few more times in the clean page before the client saw it, but then when she did, she was able to go in and comment on the parts that she liked and didn't like. And I took her feedback and came up with one final iteration for the homepage. Typically, I only design the homepage in Figma and then I build out the rest of the pages directly in Squarespace, just kind of based on the styles that I designed for the homepage. But in this case, I also designed the about page in Figma just because I wasn't really sure what to do with it. And I feel like Figma is a really good way for me to brainstorm and come up with new ideas. Now that I'm done with the design in Figma, I can move on to building the actual website in Squarespace. The client in this case already had a Squarespace website, so all she had to do was give me administrator access so that I could go into the back end of her website and work on it. The first thing I always do with existing websites is create an under construction page or a maintenance page, and then I'll set the maintenance page as the home page for the time being. Then I like to create a folder or a dropdown to move all the old pages to, just so I can start fresh. And then I can start creating the new pages. So here I'm editing the header, replacing the site logo, and then I get started on matching the design that I made in Figma in Squarespace. So I'm just constantly flipping back and forth from Figma to Squarespace, exporting images out of Figma and putting them in Squarespace. The latest version of Squarespace, uh, version 7.1, is a drag and drop interface called Fluid Engine. So it makes it really easy to position elements where you want them on the page. But there are times when there are certain things we want to achieve that Squarespace doesn't let us do right out of the box. In those cases, we need to use custom CSS. For example, here I had a gallery that I wanted to add a little bit of space in between each of the images but it didn't seem like there was a way to do that in the settings for the gallery. Instead, I used some CSS code to add a 10 pixel margin to each of the images. So I'm not gonna spend time explaining CSS in this video, but I'm thinking about making a video in the future where I dive into that a little bit more. But if you're already familiar with CSS, I just wanna quickly mention this Chrome plugin that has helped me immensely, which is called Squarespace ID Finder. And it basically just shows you the IDs of all the elements on the page so that you can easily copy and paste the ID and apply custom styles to it in your CSS code. After I build out all the pages, I'll swap over to mobile view to make sure that the website still looks good on a smaller screen. When we're editing the mobile version, we can change the size of the blocks, we can rearrange them, and it won't affect the desktop version of the website. But if you change the contents of any of the blocks or the styling of the block, then it will also update on the desktop version. Here, I wanted this text block to be center aligned on the mobile version, but left aligned in the desktop version. Since we can't change the styling of one with without affecting the other, we can use CSS to get around this. Using media queries in CSS, you can target specific screen sizes. So this allows me to make the text block center aligned for a smaller screen and keep it left aligned in the desktop version. And this is the final result. The client was really happy with the way this turned out and so was I. I think, I think it's really fun and playful and it's really cool that it has a lot of her art incorporated into the design. Let me know what you think about this website in the comments below. Give me some design feedback. I'd love, I'd love to hear it. Also, let me know what you think about this video. If it's something that you want to see more of, definitely let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.